Hi, everyone. Welcome to this presentation by PBS on digital notebooks and study cards using Google Slides. I'm from WVIZ in Cleveland, and I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite tools. My name is Rebecca Zulo. I'm an instructional technology specialist and instructional coach, and I'm so excited to share with you how to use Google Slides for purposes other than presentations. Here's some important information about this session. If you want a link to this presentation, you'll be using this link, bit.ly forward slash dig for digital, nb for notebooks, and cards. And you can see that up here in this yellow box. If you have any questions, this is the link that you need here, bit.ly forward slash dna13 questions. Okay, let's move along. So what is Google Slides? For those of you who haven't used this awesome tool, it's the PowerPoint of the Google Suite of Tools, which makes it a free tool for students that are using Google Suite, the Google Tools. They Perhaps they have a Chromebook or a PC, and it's something they have access to as long as they have a Google account. What can Google Slides be used for? Well, of course, they could be used for presentations, although we're not going to go over that today. They can be used for note taking, study cards, digital notebooks. They can collaborate with others, as you see in this picture, and they can make graphic organizers and more. I'm going to take a moment now to show you a couple sample digital notebooks and study cards. Here's an example of a digital notebook. If we click on this tab over here, this is one that I've made with my students and it's, it was just a basic template and I was showing them how to use the template. So I provided all the basic slides and then they would put in the information. So the title for the most part would stay the same, but they would put their own information here and when they took the course and they could modify anything that they wanted to. Here we were practicing with interactive table of contents. This is a basic slide and I had all the students go in and put information about themselves. So they would put in information about what they've done uh, and they might put in a picture of their students doing something and we added in some shapes and we even added in a bitmoji with a little speech bubble. So as you can see, this would be uh, where they would take their notes as we went along in the course and I was showing them how to do their own notebook. And then they shared with me when, of course, when it was all finished, they shared these with me and I graded them. So that's one sample notebook. I also wanted to show you a uh, sample flashcards. Now this I made from a template that was in Google Drive. So if you went to File, New, and you went down to Presentation from a Template, this is one of the templates that you would find. So when I did that, then I just went through and I, and I modified it. I put in my own pictures and my own words, and I'll show you later how that can be used as a study aid. It could be used in the present mode right on their computer, but I'll also show you how to do it on their device. So those are some samples. When students take notes, there's some very basic things that they can do. We're going to take a look at that on this slide. All right, first of all, it can be informal where no one's checking it. There's no certain format that you want, um, and they would just take them however they wanted. It could be in class where the teacher guides the students. It could be a note-taking form that you provided and they're filling it in. They can do it out of class. They might even be taking notes on something they've read as an assignment or a video they had to watch. If students are one-to-one -one with their device, there's no reason why they can't be taking notes just about every day if there's something they need to take notes on. Uh, paired notes just means that maybe they're sharing with someone in the class. They can collaborate and they can access this on their mobile device, which I will show you later. So let's go over how you would create slides using your Drive and your Slides app take a look. So oh, if you go to your drive, here's your basic drive right here. If you click on that. You would select new 
and then you would scroll down to where it says slides and you could either choose from a template or just new so if I click on new I would go down to where it says Google Slides and if you click the arrow it allows you to make it a blank one or from a template I'm just going to go with blank for now so it's starting a new one takes a little while depending on your connection and mine's kind of slow today now up here where it says untitled presentation that would be a place where a title should should go so if you wanted to make one let's say on um, I'll call it a fraction notebook and then they would put maybe their first initial and their last name up there okay now, if you wanted to choose a theme, or they did, there's themes that come up on the right-hand side, and you could scroll down, and they could pick one of those, which they're awfully nice. So, but I'm just going to show you how to do the basics, but the themes are great. So here is where they would put their title. Now, they might want to put the title of their notebook here, Fraction Notebook. Maybe their subtitle might be their name. And of course, just like in Microsoft, you can change color, size, um, all kinds of thing, things. And you can also, if you click on the small icon on the left-hand panel, you can also change the background. So you can change it by color or put in uh, an image. All right, so if you wanted to add another slide, up here you have your various layouts in the upper left where the plus is. If you just hit plus, you kind of take what they give you, but if you hit the down arrow, you can choose the exact one you want, blank or one of the others. How about if I choose, oh, how about this one? You can always change it if you don't like what you selected. So that's the layouts. I talked about the themes, and I wanted to also talk about how to insert. So they've already inserted a text box here for me, so I'm just going to say um, maybe table of contents. If that's important, you want a table of contents slide. If you have something in and you don't want it, you just would click on it. Let's say I don't want this one, and I would just hit backspace, and it goes away. Oops, I spelled table of contents wrong. So I'm going to fix that. Okay, so let me show you how to insert a shape. Let's make another slide. Let's say I choose this blank one. Let's go over how to insert things. So if you have a blank slide, or it's not set up the way you want, you can insert a text box. The little box with the T on it up here is a text box. You click on that, it changes your cursor, and then you just click and drag and make it whatever size you want. That doesn't mean the text will match it. You might have to change that. So maybe the first page might be about um, definitions. Okay, now that's kind of small. So I would highlight that and make it much bigger. 48 I might make it bold and I might even change the color okay so that's a text box I could put in another text box here to add some words I did want to show you how to put in a shape so first let's put in one more text box we'll add some text there later there's my text box it's still there uh, here's a shape let's choose a shape any shape that you like so how about this post-it note I like that one and I could put a little post-it note right there. Okay, you can make that any color you want by clicking on it. Click on the post or the, the paint can and choose a color. And then I click on it and click edit text and then you can begin typing. The only thing I've noticed about the shapes is it doesn't allow you to start at the top. It starts right in the middle. So sometimes I like the text boxes better. And I right click, edit text, and then here is where the terms would go. And they could continue. So that's how you insert a text box. That's how you insert a shape. Let's go over how you insert an image. Let me make this a little smaller. If I wanted to insert an image, there's an image icon here. I'd click here. And you could either upload one from the computer or you could search the web. And let's say I wanted a fraction clip art 
type in what you're looking for and find one that you like. Let's say I kind of like this one and I just drag it over or I click insert. The size may not be what you want, but you can always change it in the corner. Okay, so that's how you insert an image. All right, I also wanted to show you how you would insert a, a hyperlink. So for a hyperlink, I often like to put in something for it to go into. So, um, well, I could just put it here just to show you how to do it. Let's say I wanted a link to a math dictionary. Okay, I'm going to put that link right there, but first I have to get the link. So I open a new tab and I find my math dictionary. Okay, and I already know which one I like. I really like this, a maths dictionary for kids. I'm just going to copy it. I'll show that. I just want to show you how to put in a link so the page itself is not that important. So let's go back to here and let's say this was the text you wanted to hyperlink. You would highlight it and then you would either do a right click and go down to link or you would click the link up here. And then the words will say math dictionary. Here you paste the link. Either right click paste or control V and then click apply. And then you can see it becomes underlined and hyperlinked. Okay. And you can see if you click on it then that comes up. So that's how you put in a hyperlink. I also wanted to show you how to put in slide numbers. Um, if you want to see slide numbers, which I like, uh, they'll show up in the bottom right. You go to insert and go all the way down to slide numbers and click on that and just click apply and they'll start showing up in the bottom right, which I appreciate. Right, let's go back to our slide presentation and see what's next. All right, so if you want to make digital notebooks in slides, uh, we talked about that. You want to let your students know what the expectations are. You'd want to model how to do it for them. And you'd want to allow time as the students are doing it to process information. So you don't want to go too quickly. You can use templates when you want, and there are templates you can find online. There is a link here to some templates, and you would just download the ones that you wanted in Google Slides. They take a little while to download, so I do have one that I've downloaded already from slidesmania.com, and this one's called, uh, well, you can see the, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but O-G-A-W-A -A is the name of it, and it's just a template that you can share with your students or they can download, and then they would just replace the text with their text, and they could customize it by adding the same things that we talked about in the other ones. There's also some templates that are right in your Google Drive. And I use some of those templates to make some flashcards. So let me show you the template that I used from Google Drive to make some flashcards. There they are. Okay. And I'll show you later how to use that on the mobile device. All right, I wanted to show you how to provide feedback. So if you have your students making a notebook and shared it with you, make sure that when they share it with you, first of all, that they allow you to edit it. So they would put your email address here and then over here on the right, they would have to make sure that the pencil is showing so that you can edit it. So every student should share it with you so that you can then give them feedback. All right, so let's say you're grading the students and you could either insert a little slide right in here, just add a slide and then put some feedback and they could delete that later, I suppose. Um, or if you wanted to provide specific feedback, like let's say you really like what they wrote here or you like this link, you would highlight it and then go up here to the comment tool, click on that, click comment, and then give them feedback. Uh, nice resource. Okay. All right. So that's how you could provide feedback and you can always insert extra slides. You can insert rubrics and you can work from there. I like to make my own little template that has like sentence starters and then I just fill it in as I go. And I like to put in rubrics so that I don't have to, you know, write a lot on every student's. Okay. So remember the way we're using this right now is as a study tool or notebook, but not as a presentation. Okay, we talked about using templates, so I'm going to kind of slide over that one. All right, the contact hour code for this session that you're watching right now is DNA13. Write that down in case you want to apply for a certificate to get credit for watching this video and learning from it. So DNA13. 
Okay, so here's a few teacher tips about using Google Slides. Uh, if you decide to make a template, rather than having students make their own, you'd want to share it with them. And an easy way to share it with them is through Google Classroom. So you make your template. And then on Google Classroom, you choose the option to make a copy for every student. And then when they get their own copy, then they can just customize it. You could share it with a QR code, give them the link that way, or you could just provide the link. Uh, we already talked about collaboration, how if they click share, if there's a partner in their class they want to share it with uh, and work together, they would just put in their email address. And we talked about comments, feedbacks, and feedback and rubrics already. All right, so creating study cards, um, you can see that the slides are really just big flashcards. So like they could make every other slide like um, a term and a definition, or they can just set it up so that each one is a note card of things they have to study. I showed you a sample, and on the next slide, I'm going to show you how that works on their device. So if you have a smartphone and you've downloaded the Slides app, this video right here is going to show you how it will work. One of the benefits of using Google Slides as a study aid is that a lot of students have smartphones. And with the smartphone, if they download various Google apps like Google Slides, they can use Google Slides as a study aid. So I'm going to show you in this video how I would use it. Now I've created some sample slides, so I'm going to click on my Slides app that I've already downloaded for free. And let's see if the flashcards come up that I made. There they are. I just created these, so I'm going to tap on those. Okay, and you can see there's my flashcards. So what I'm going to do is put it in the play mode. At the top, you'll see play, and it'll say, where do you want to play it? So I'm going to say present on this device. Okay, then I'll turn it sideways so they'll be full screen size. Okay, and there's just my title. Just tap it. And there's the first one, podcast. And so I'll be thinking, what is a podcast? Tap it, and then there's my definition, an audio program made available in digital format. Okay, one-to-one, -one. what's that? A ratio that specifies that a school provides a one, one digital device for every student, and so on, station rotation. There's the definition of station rotation, self-paced learning, the definition of self-paced learning, and you can make as many slides as you want, but that was my sample for you. Okay, so this is why I think digital slides is an awesome tool for studying. Whether you make a digital notebook that you study or whether you make flashcards that you study, it's just a great thing. So you can see why I really like these tools because it's just something easy for students to be able to use. Right, let's see if we can move to the next slide. Here's a quote for you. Guiding students to use ed tech tools in ways that are visual, creative, and personal can help them to learn content and study strategies. Your efforts will help prepare students for future academic tasks and life goals. And this is Rebecca Zulu, and I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. So here, once again, is the link for this presentation. And if you have any questions, make sure that you put them on the slide that I shared uh, earlier, and I will get back to you. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to helping you. I have one more presentation coming up, so I hope that you're here.